Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I wanted to share a few snack ideas inspired by the season. I wanted to use pumpkin a few different ways. So we have a savory option here. This is a garlic pumpkin hummus, and we made some homemade rosemary flatbread crackers. And then for our sweet dessert option, we have a pumpkin cheesecake dip with homemade vegan graham crackers. And I've also sliced up some fresh apples to serve alongside that. Both of these recipes just scream fall to me. I love the colors. I think these would be a really great addition to your spread if you're planning on hosting any friends or family for Halloween this year. Before I get into the recipes, I wanna extend a huge thank you to Kroger for sponsoring today's video. They have been an amazing friend of the channel. And as always, I was able to find everything that I needed for these recipes at my local Kroger family store here in Colorado, that's King Supers. They always have an amazing selection of seasonal produce so I especially love that I was able to find fresh pumpkin and pomegranate to incorporate in today's recipes and then of course they always have everything that I need in the pantry slash baking department you guys know I'm baking constantly but especially during the fall season so they always have amazing quality ingredients really affordable prices so thanks to Kroger check the information box below for more Halloween recipe inspiration on their website and you'll also find all of the recipes featured in today's video written out for you and with that let's get started First things first, we are going to need some pumpkin puree for both our sweet and our savory dip recipes. So you can of course use canned pumpkin puree, but today we are actually gonna be making our own homemade pumpkin puree. I picked up a few of these little pie pumpkins from my local Kroger. They're so cute. And you just wanna preheat your oven to 400 degrees and then cut your pumpkin in half from the stem to the base. Then go ahead and scoop out the seeds and all the stringy flesh from the inside of the pumpkin and make sure to save the seeds to season and roast. They make a really nice snack. Drizzle the pumpkin with oil and use a pastry brush to coat the cut surfaces. And then you're gonna place both halves cut side down on a lined baking tray and prick them with a fork or a knife in several spots just to let the steam escape while they're cooking. Roast these from anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour. This will just depend on the size of your pie pumpkins and you'll know they're done when they're tender enough to pierce the skin with a fork or a butter knife really easily. These are super, super hot at this point. So let them sit for a while until they are cool enough to handle. And now you're gonna scoop out all of the tender flesh from the inside of the pumpkin. Now, depending on how you're gonna use this, you can simply mash it, but if you want a completely smooth puree like what you would find in a can, pop it in your blender or food processor and just blend until it's completely smooth. And you can keep this puree in your fridge for around a week in a sealed container, but we're gonna use ours right now. So let's go ahead and make some pumpkin hummus. You will of course need some cooked chickpeas and you can use them from a can, but I actually really like to cook my own chickpeas from dry for hummus because you can cook them until they're extra soft and really easy to blend so you can make your hummus super smooth. So the night prior, I soaked my chickpeas from dry and then that morning I drained off the water, added them to my instant pot with some fresh water and I pressure cook them for about 45 minutes until they were extremely soft and easy to mash. Now you'll add your chickpeas to your food processor and to this we will add some of that fresh pumpkin puree, some tahini, some fresh squeezed lemon juice, and then some olive oil and minced garlic. And we have just sauteed these together until the garlic was nice and tender and fragrant and given them a few minutes to cool before adding into the hummus. Salt and pepper. Blend everything together until it is nice and smooth. You can also add in some herbs like rosemary or fresh sage if you like. These go really well with the pumpkin flavor. But since we are going to be making some really flavorful rosemary crackers after this, I'm just going to leave my hummus as is. Taste it and adjust the salt and pepper to preference. This actually tastes really amazing served warm or chilled. And if you wanna get fancy, you can also sprinkle over some pomegranate seeds. They're a little sweet and a little tart and they just provide a nice counterpoint to all the savory flavors in the hummus. So let's start with our rosemary crackers. In a medium bowl, whisk together some all-purpose flour, salt, 
baking powder, and a little bit of sugar. Then I'm also adding in some fresh ground black pepper. I'm also adding in about a tablespoon of sesame seeds. You can add in any other kind of seed or finely chopped nuts if you like. And I think pumpkin and rosemary go really well together, so I am adding in some fresh rosemary. I've just plucked the leaves off of one sprig of rosemary. I'm giving them a fine chop. Whisk all that together, and then separately whisk together some olive oil and some cold water. Gradually drizzle that wet mixture into your dry ingredients and mix until it comes together into a dough. And then turn it out and knead until it's firm and smooth and it springs right back once poked. Put your ball of dough back in your bowl, cover it and let it rest for between 20 to 30 minutes. This will just give the gluten a chance to relax so that it's easier to roll out into our crackers. Once your dough has had a chance to rest, go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Now you're going to turn your dough out and divide it into four pieces. And you'll roll each of these out until it's as thin as possible. The thinner you make these, the crispier your crackers will bake up. Now if you want to get festive, you can cut these crackers into any shapes you like, or you can just use a knife or a pizza cutter to cut them into squares. Transfer these to a lined baking tray, and you're going to bake them for between 8 to 10 minutes. Just keep an eye on them and take them out when they're golden brown and crisp. And then remove them from the oven and allow them to come to room temperature, and they will continue to crisp up as they cool. Next we are going to move on to our pumpkin cheesecake dip. So for this you'll need an 8 ounce tub of vegan cream cheese, let it sit out on the counter a few hours ahead of time so that it's nice and soft, and I recommend using a hand mixer to start beating the cream cheese smooth just so that we can avoid any lumps in our finished dip. To this you'll then add some brown sugar, some of your fresh homemade pumpkin puree, and a dash of vanilla extract, and blend all that until it's nice and smooth. You'll also add in some cinnamon and some pumpkin spice. You can add in as much or as little of these spices as you like, depending on how strong you want that flavor. Now you'll need a can of coconut milk or coconut cream. Just make sure it's the full fat kind and not light coconut milk. That will not work. So make sure to chill this can in the fridge for at least a few hours and the coconut cream will harden at the top of the can. So you're gonna scoop this off into a bowl and you can save the coconut water for smoothies. Then into the coconut cream, you're going to sift some powdered sugar to remove all the lumps and beat this together until it's smooth and fluffy. You're going to take this coconut whip and fold it into that pumpkin cream cheese mixture from before. Just fold it nice and gently so that it stays fluffy and you're gonna let this dip chill for at least half an hour before serving and it will firm up so it will be more similar to the texture of like a no-bake cheesecake. And this dip goes really beautifully with our homemade graham crackers or as a dip for sliced apples or pretzels. Next, we're gonna be making our homemade vegan graham crackers. To the bowl of a food processor, add in some whole wheat flour, all-purpose flour, baking powder, a pinch of salt, and some brown sugar. Give all of that a few pulses to combine everything. And then to that you'll add a stick of cold cubed vegan butter. Again, just give the ingredients a few pulses to start to cut the butter into your dry mixture, but don't overmix it at this point. Now drizzle in some maple syrup, some plant milk, and a dash of vanilla extract and begin to pulse the food processor repeatedly to mix everything. It's gonna start out very crumbly, but as you continue to pulse, it should all come together in one large piece. Turn this dough out and divide it into two. Press each half into a square just to make it easier to roll out into a rectangular shape later and wrap it in plastic or parchment. We're gonna give these a chill for at least 30 minutes, preferably an hour, before we roll it out into our graham crackers. When the dough is almost done chilling, preheat your oven to 300 degrees. We're gonna be cooking these low and slow. Now roll each piece of dough out into a rectangle about 1 8 to 1 16th inch thickness. I recommend rolling between two sheets of parchment just to keep everything nice and smooth and nonstick. 
Then use a knife or a pizza roller to cut into graham cracker shapes. And use a fork to prick the surface of the dough and transfer this to a baking tray. And bake these for 18 to 20 minutes. Just like the other crackers, they're going to continue to crisp up as they cool. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you drew some inspiration from these recipes. If you try out any of them, I would love to know. You can leave a comment here, tag me in a photo on Instagram. And thanks again to Kroger for sponsoring today's video. I will see you guys soon.